بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله والصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى قيام الساعة أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah. He is one and has no partner. And we invoke His peace and blessings upon His noble messenger, after whom there is no more messenger to come. His family, His companions, and all those who follow them until such time that the hour is established. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, bi-ithnillah, we continue with the discussion of the hadith or the ahadith that talk about women, women being created from a curved rib bone of Adam. And we discussed before, why is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a rib bone, a part of the body of Adam and created Eve? What's the wisdom behind that? And today what I would like to share with you are some ideas and thoughts about the wisdom behind taking a rib bone and not just any other bone. Why a rib bone? <clears throat> and this, this fact that the rib bone is a curved bone has been highlighted in the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said that this bone is curved and if you try to straighten it, you will break it. Now, these ahadith, brothers and sisters, really are talking about the nature of women. And the idea is, because they are of a different gender, although they're created from Adam, Eve was created from Adam, but because they're a different gender, there are some differences between the two. We're not perfectly the same or exactly the same. And so what the Prophet ﷺ teaches us in these ahadith is that women have their own natures. And just like the rib bone that has a particular shape because it has a particular job to do. That's why it's curved. The rib bone is curved because it's supposed to provide protection for the internal organs within. And so a straight bone would not do the work. The fact that the rib bone is curved does not mean it's any less important than any other straight piece of bone in your body. It doesn't. The bone in your arm is straight. It doesn't mean that this straight bone is better than that curved bone. It's just that each has its own function to perform. And its shape is best suited for the function it has to perform. If someone thought, well, you know, the rib bone is curved, we need a straight bone. And they try to, they try to straighten it. They will only do one thing, they'll break it. And when the bone is broken, two things happen. Number one is very painful. So if you try to straighten uh, your wife and you break her, she's going to be a source of a lot of pain for you. Right? It's very painful. And two, it will no longer fulfill its function. It can't do its work anymore. It's broken. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, in some of these ahadith in Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, in istamta'ta biha, istamta'ta biha wa fiha iwaj. So in order to benefit from the, the, the women, you have to benefit from them while there is that curveness in them. That is, they have their own nature. Don't try to straighten it. Just like we benefit from the rib bone with the shape that it has. In fact, in fact, that's how we benefit most from the rib bone, by leaving its shape as it is, letting it do what it's supposed to do. And so what the Prophet ﷺ really is teaching us brothers and sisters in these ahadith, is not that women are evil in nature, that they're crooked. No, what it means 
the way in which Allah created them, He, he decreed for them their own nature. Although they're human beings just like males, the fact that Allah created females as well, means that they have, in certain cases, slightly different nature than, than the male. And the problem we face very often is that the male, the husband, tries to get his wife to be exactly what he envisions her to be. So he thinks his wife should be like this, and he wants his wife to be like that. That is attempting to straighten that curved rib bone. It will only result in breaking it. And in, the, in one hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you try to straighten her, meaning the, the, the woman, you will break her. وَكَسْرُهَا طَلَقُهَا And breaking her would lead to talaq. Because like I said, once the rib bone is broken, it's painful. It causes you a lot of grief and pain. And so that pain could eventually lead to divorce is the only solution. Splitting up is the only solution. And thus the Prophet ﷺ advises people to understand this nature, to understand this reality, and to live with it because that's how you will benefit from it. You will benefit from it when it stays in its, in its shape and it, it functions, uh, it does what it's supposed to do. It fulfills its function. And so the lesson is not try, do not try to change your women to be just like what you think they should be because you're thinking as a male. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created her as a female. And studies have shown that even the brain of men and women is wired differently. Even our brains are wired differently. Very often, we find that women tend to excel in language and arts. While boys, males tend to excel in math and, and, and these other subjects. Of course, it doesn't mean that, you know, girls don't excel in math and boys don't excel in language and arts. But nevertheless, the brain, the anatomy of the brain of the male and the female is not exactly the same. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us in these ahadith. Of course, he was not a surgeon. He was not a brain surgeon or anything like that. And so in his time, he had to use language that his people could understand. Or else they would say, hold it to a messenger of Allah, we don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about neurons and, and these different uh, 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 words that we've only discovered and invented these days. So his language was such that the people could understand. And so the shape, the, 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 the use of the, the, the rib bone is in effect teaching us that women have their own nature. Of course, of course, we cannot blame bad behavior on the nature, right? So no one can claim, look, this is my nature. Trying to justify their bad behavior. There are certainly behaviors that can be corrected. And this ought to be done, mind you. This ought to be done. But at the end of the day, it is not possible for a female to think and behave exactly like the male. That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended. Because if that's what He intended, He would not have needed to create genders. One gender, that's it. Everybody's the same. If He wanted everybody to behave in the same way, and if we were all capable of doing everything that's necessary for our life and survival on this planet, then there was no need for genders. But Allah created genders. There's a reason for that. And each gender has its nature. And the best way to benefit, for both genders to benefit from each other, is to understand this nature and to live with it, as opposed to trying to change it. Because you can't change it, you'll break it. So this, brothers and sisters, is the lesson that the Prophet ﷺ teaches us. Not that women are crooked. And perhaps the translation, the choice of word for the translation 
is not necessarily wrong because the word bent or curved, another word for it in English is, is crooked, meaning it's not straight. However, because of the, the other meaning, and when a person reads this translation, perhaps the other meaning that means evil in nature and bad and so on, this comes to mind. And so the assumption is that the Prophet ﷺ says that women are evil in nature. This is wrong. This is not true. How could the Prophet ﷺ say this, brothers and sisters? And then his own wives, on many occasions, gave him advice when he was at a loss of what to do. Subhanallah. The Prophet ﷺ, when he, when he went with the Sahaba for Umrah in the sixth year after the Hijrah, and Quraysh stopped them at Al Hudaybiyah and prevented them from going to Mecca for Umrah. And as a result, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah came into existence. There were a number of terms of this treaty, brothers and sisters, that the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, were angry with. They, they, they weren't ready to accept these terms. One of them being that the Muslims will go back to Medina. They will not proceed to Mecca to do Umrah, but they will come the following year, year seven now, this is year six, they're going there. They will come back the following year and do their Umrah. And Quraysh felt that by stipulating this term of the agreement, it would show the Arab world that they were the ones who were in control of Mecca and that the Muslims couldn't come and go at will. The Muslims had to come based on when they decide they should come. That's what they thought about it. And the companions, عنهم, they saw this as injustice, as unfair, as unreasonable. They're ready to fight. But the Prophet ﷺ accepted this, this term. And so eventually the treaty was concluded and now people had to go back to Medina. But everybody's in Ihram. And so the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba that they should get their hair shaved or, or cut their hair. And if they have their animals slaughter it, come out of the state of Ihram. They all refused. They refused. And the Prophet ﷺ became worried. Because remember, he's the messenger of Allah. He gave his companions an order and they refused to obey it. It could have dire consequences for them. So he went into his tent and he's worried. He's worried. And Umm Salama radiallahu anha, his wife, she saw from his face that he was bothered, he was troubled. And she asked him, what's wrong? And he told her that the companions, the Muslims have refused to obey his command, his order. And she said to him, O Messenger of Allah, why don't you go out and do what you want them to do and they will follow you. This is the advice of a woman. Now the Prophet ﷺ did not say, hold it, I'm the Messenger of God, you're a woman, you know, you are inferior to the male, why are you even giving me advice? No. You know what he did? He turned around, he went back out, and he called one of the companions and says, shave my hair. He did not tell the companions to cut their hair anymore. He just went out and did exactly what Umm Salama advised him to do. Go out, do what you want them to do, they will follow you. So he, he went out and says, come, cut my hair. And by the time he had his hair cut, all the Sahabas came and they cut their hair. When the Prophet ﷺ performed Hajj, on the day of Arafah, he's standing there in Arafah. And people began to ask the question, is he fasting? Because some people didn't seem eat anything for the day. So some people are saying, yes, he's fasting. Others are saying, no, he didn't fast. Maymuna radiyallahu anha. Another wife of his, alayhi salatu wasalam. What she did was she sent him a bowl of milk. And he took the milk and he drank the milk. In the presence of everyone who could see him. Now she could have sent someone to ask the Prophet, are you fasting? Yes or no? 
he might have said, no, I'm not fasting, because he wasn't. But if she had asked the question, only the people who were very close would have heard the question and the answer. The others who were a little bit far would never hear the question and answer. They would never know whether he was fasting or not. So there would be dispute about it. What she did instead was she sent a bowl of milk. Now from a far distance you can see this. You might not be able to hear anything, but you can see. And so when the Prophet ﷺ took the bowl of milk and drank it, even people who were far away could see that he was drinking. And so they would know that he did not fast on the day of Arafah. But whose idea was this? A lady. So it cannot mean it's a contradiction for the Prophet ﷺ on the one hand to treat women as equals, listening to the advice of his wives and so on. And then on the other hand claim, or, or as supposedly as, as some people claim in these are hadith that the Prophet ﷺ, and therefore the Islamic perspective is that women are crooked by nature. No, this is a tanaq, a contradiction that is not possible. It is not possible for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give incorrect information or contradictory information. Why? Because all he is doing, brothers and sisters, is to convey the message of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So all of these ideas are inspiration from Allah. And if we were to allow contradictions, then in effect what we're allowing is that God is contradictory. And that is impossible. God cannot contradict Himself. So, when we look at these ahadith, it's important that we don't just look at one hadith by itself in isolation. It's important to look at the issue as a whole. Perhaps there are other ahadith and even ayats of the Quran that may shed light on this hadith or this one particular statement. So it's important and necessary not to just derive a, a hukum, a ruling from just one statement, but to look at all the statements that are relevant to the issue before you're able to derive with the correct understanding and the correct ruling. So I hope that inshallah this would clear the air regarding this hadith. There is another hadith that I would like to talk about that also deals with this issue of women being supposedly inferior to men. And this is a hadith that is also <coughs> in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, in which the Prophet I can't, I don't have the time today, of course, in another session. He referred to women as deficient in intelligence and in religion. So we'll talk about that, inshallah, that hadith by itself, because it has certain uh, concepts and ideas we need to explore. Uh, but these are the two hadith, the one that talks about women being created from a crooked rim, and the other about women being deficient in intelligence and religion that people look at and say, look, I mean, if this is a hadith, it's coming from the messenger of Allah, then it must mean, must mean this is the Islamic perspective that women are inferior to men. So we'll deal with that inshallah separately. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this beautiful message is revealed from mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message and to conform into it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to, to understand the nature of our women folk so that we can live in peace and harmony with them rather than trying to change this nature which will only result in, in problems and in heartache. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect, protect us and our families from the temptations and the deviations of shaitan. And may He keep us all firm in the straight path. أقول قولي هذا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته